Welcome to AJSNetworking.com. In this video, I'm going to take a look at uh, going from GNS3 1.x to the 2.x. A lot's been happening in the world of GNS3. Let's look at it together. So if I go help about, you can see I'm currently running 1.3.11 on Windows 10 for GNS3. I spun up a quick topology here just to test things. Let's make sure things are stable in this version. If I go to Task Manager and I go to More Details, and then we click on the Performance tab, we can check on CPU utilization, and we can see things are totally mellow. That's great. So I've obviously got my idle PC values all set properly, and GNS3 NS3 is ready and rocking and raring to go. Let me turn off the connector tool. Let's right click and go to a console, for instance, and let's make sure that this router is happy, happy, ready to be configured, and it is. So my 1.x GNS3 is running just fine. Let's see if we can totally screw things up by moving to the next version, 2.x of GNS3. So what I'll do here is stop this running simulation. We'll go to help, and we'll do the check for update feature, and sure enough, we've now got a 2.x version available. So we are gonna visit the website and download this new version of GNS3. So I've downloaded that new version. I ran the install as an administrator in Windows 10 and it barked at me to close the previous version of GNS3. So I have done that and relaunched the installation. And here we go through the setup wizard. We're gonna go ahead and install this to the start menu folder of GNS3. And then notice the default installation components. It's everything except NCAP 0.83 required to send and receive packets to your ethernet card. I assume this would be for analysis. We'll go ahead and enable that. I want all of the features that are coming with the new GNS3. We'll choose next and we'll do an install to the default location. It's already finding win PCAP 413, so we will abort the installation of that sub product. Here is nmap, we'll agree to the terms there, and we'll go ahead and install it with the default installation option set. Next up, we'll finish that installation and install the latest version of Wireshark, a little bonus that we're getting with GNS3 here. This is great, of course, because we can do packet analysis in conjunction with our GNS3 simulations. Next up, we have the SolarWinds response time viewer setup, which we're getting complementary with our GNS3 installation, so that's great. And we quickly install that. And then it looks like finally GNS3 is being installed. Uh, we'll close the response time viewer from SolarWinds. So now we're on the GNS3 installation itself. Awesome, that is wrapped up. We'll choose next. Uh, do we want a free license for the SolarWinds standard tool set? No, I'm gonna say no, just to get us through this quickly. And then we'll start GNS3 upon the completion of this installation. Looks like it's bringing me to the GNS3 thank you page. That's awesome. And notice that we can see here that we have the setup wizard now that's running for GNS3. Now notice our first choice here is to run stuff on a remote server, run only legacy iOS devices, or download a GNS3 VM that is available for free. Running GNS3 as a virtual machine will give us the ability to run even more stuff beyond just legacy iOS's on this computer. We definitely wanna try for this, right? So the server path is our GNS3 location, the host binding is loopback, and then the port is 8000 for TCP. We'll keep those defaults and we'll choose next. It's gonna connect to the local GNS server on our loopback and port 8000. So here we get our first error in the process. We can't connect to the GNS3 system using those parameters, so let's do this. So in order to fix this, what I did was rebooted and then turned off the Windows firewall for both private and public networks. So we know the Windows firewall can't get involved now, and sure enough, the connection to the local server is successful. I can punch a hole in the firewall for this connection, or just have a shortcut on my desktop to turn off the firewall when working with GNS3. Obviously, punching a hole through it is probably a better idea, so we can't get attacked while we're working in our GNS3 product. I'll choose next, and it says, all right, the VMware VM run tool couldn't be found. VMware or the VIX API required for VMware player is probably not installed, and I'm instructed where I can go to download it. So I'm off and running to do that now. 
So great news, the URL that they gave me in that dialog box worked for the download. So you can see I'm installing this VMware VIX right now. We'll just accept the defaults on that. And that completed. Notice after installation, we need to restart GNS3. So I'm gonna say okay here. I'm going to cancel, shut down GNS3, and then restart it. So here we are after restart, and I'm chuckling because the installation of GNS3 is a lot more tricky than it used to be, <laughs> for sure. So with this new functionality comes a little bit clunkier of an install. Anywho, here we go. We've got the server path, host binding, and port. We'll choose next. Hopefully we'll make a connection. Remember, I've still got that Windows firewall killed, so that shouldn't get in the way of making that connection. That was successful. We'll choose next. And it says, okay, we can't find a VM named GNS3 VM. Is it imported in VMware or VirtualBox? We're gonna say okay, and notice there's a link here of where we can find the GNS3 VM that we need to run GNS3 as a VM. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this link to download that VM. So I've downloaded the VM using that link and I've started the VMware Workstation 12 player. This is the free version of the Workstation 12 player that you can get from VMware. I'll skip this version for now, actually telling Workstation 12 to remind me later they've got an upgrade for their software. But what we're going to do is we're going to import that virtual machine. We're going to open the virtual machine that I downloaded. That I stuck in the GNS3 root folder in my OneDrive in a folder called VM. There it is. That's the download that we did with that link. We're going to go ahead and import the GNS3 VM right now. Then when this is complete, we're going to slide back over to the GNS3 installation wizard, really the setup wizard, I should say, and we're going to specify that we have imported this GNS3 VM image into our VM player software. So there we go. There's the import. We'll minimize this. We'll drop this list and we'll say... Okay, how about refresh? There we go. It sees the GNS3 VM. We'll give it one virtual CPU core and two gigs of RAM. And what you'll want to do before choosing next there is go to your VMware Workstation Player software and go ahead and power on the virtual machine. Notice it says VMware Player and Hyper-V are not compatible, so I'll have to turn off Hyper-V on my Windows 10 machine. That's not a problem at all. What we'll do is we'll go into the control plan panel, if I can say that. We're going to programs and features, and we're going to turn Windows features on or off, and we want to turn off Hyper-V. So we'll say OK. It'll make those changes, and we're not going to restart because we're bold here, and we'll see if we can just fire up this virtual machine without that restart, and we can't. So I'll be right back after a reboot. So I have rebooted and notice I've started by launching the VMware Workstation 12 player. And by the way, I should mention at this point, this is starting to feel like, as my father would say, a royal pain in the ass. Anyways, let's go to the GNS3 VM and let's go ahead and see if we can power that thing on at this point. It says something about the keyboard hook timeout value. Okay, whatever. And we've updated that value. And finally, it looks like we are able to launch the GNS3 VM. Look at that. Great. And here's a little information screen. I'll tap OK or let's see, I'll just hit enter after clicking in there on the keyboard and then enter again and yeah okay it looks like we're going to sit at that window to return to our computer we'll do a control alt great so now i got control back on my local pc and now i'm going to fire up gns3 again and i assume it's going to send us into that setup wizard again and it did all right let's see if we can get through this thing together we'll choose that we want to run modern stuff and say next we will then have it connect to the local server with those default settings. Remember, my Windows firewall is still turned off, so I don't think we're going to have a problem there. Fingers crossed that we connect to the local server. We do. We're going to say next, and it is wanting to use VMware and the GNS3 VM that we downloaded. Remember, it's now running, so I'll choose next, and fingers crossed, we'll choose finish, and this looks great. It looks like we are over here in the server summary connected to the GNS3 VM as well as the local trainer PC. Awesome. 
So we're gonna add an iOS router using a real iOS image. We'll click on that, we'll say okay. And then it says, all right, run this iOS router on my local computer. No, let's try and be fancy and run it in the GNS3 VM. We'll choose next. We have found our existing image, that's great. We'll choose next. It's a 7200 uh, platform device. We'll choose next. Oh, and that name's already in use. Please uh, assign another name. We'll just say uh, 7200 underscore on underscore VM. How about that? We'll choose next. And the default RAM is fine. We'll choose next. There's our fast ethernet slot. And let's drop in the PA, uh, let's do a PA4T plus for some serial ports. We'll choose next. We'll do the idle PC finder. Find out what the best value is for the idle PC. This will just take a moment, I hope. And there we go. It has found a value appropriate for our system. We'll choose finish. We can see the 7200 on VM that we have done. We'll say okay. And notice it's giving us the new project window. We'll go ahead and create a new project titled untitled. And there we go. We'll click on our list of images. There's our 7200 image. We'll drag one over, drag another one over, bring the connect tool in play. We'll connect via the serial one slash zero interfaces. And we will cross our fingers and click start. And wow, those fired up very quickly. Gotta love it. We'll turn off the connector tool. We'll right click and go to the console of R1 and we can see that machine is booting. So we were successful in bringing ourselves from a 1.x version of GNS3 to the new 2.x world. Running GNS3 complements of a virtual machine, which gives us even more options for what we wanna simulate. Thanks so much for viewing.